I'm a sales guy, and as many of you know, the first sales job I had was as a door-to-door -door salesperson. And in my first year as a door-to-door -door salesperson, I probably knocked on 20,000 doors and got rejected thousands of times. But when I wasn't getting rejected, I was making some sales. And I eventually I got promoted. And what we were selling was telecom services, so internet, TV, and phone. Uh, for at and in the beginning, and then I transitioned to Verizon. And so when you get promoted, uh, you're given the additional responsibilities of recruiting, training, and managing your sales team. And also getting your own sales, because that's 80% of your income. So one of the biggest challenges is finding people. As you can imagine, uh, there's not a lot of people who aspire to being door-to-door -door salespeople. <laughs> And so you're constantly recruiting and every week people are quitting and so it's virtually impossible to maintain a high head count. Mm -hmm. So the best I could do is between 8 and 12 people at any given moment. I've collected a, a lot of stories and I met a lot of interesting people. There is a story that stands out that I'm going to share with you today uh, and it's actually a lesson that I learned from a rep that I recruited. Uh, his name was Derek. And Derek was fresh out of high school, and he seemed open to the opportunity to knock on some doors and try to make some money. His other options were fast food or a gas station attendant. <laughs> so I took him out for the two days mandatory training. He watched me go door to door and, and sell telecom. And after a couple days, I let him loose. And he spent two weeks going out. And after two weeks, he was making four or five sales a day, mm. which was extraordinary right when the average rep was making one or two sales at best and so during one of our three mandatory training sessions per week i asked eric to come to the front of the room and role play with some of the reps that needed more help thinking gosh you know he might, must know something that these reps don't and so he jumped up to the front of the room and these these reps got up and they started role playing the pitch and the product knowledge and the objections and to my surprise Derek didn't know anything about the product. <laughs> he couldn't answer simple product questions. He couldn't answer any of the objections. And so I got suspicious. <laughs> I started thinking, you know, maybe this Derek guy is doing something dishonest. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to go catch him in the act. Mm. I went up and said, hey, Derek, why don't you and I go knock together today? I'm not going to sell it all. I'm just going to stand in the back and observe. You can do all the knocking. And my intention is to figure out what you're doing so that we can share it with the rest yeah. of the team and elevate the results of the entire office. He's like, all right, yeah, totally. Let's do it. Like, okay, cool. So we, we start off the day. We get to the third door. And then a gentleman answers. And he goes, hi, I'm Derek from Verizon. <laughs> and the guy's like, oh, yeah, he's on Verizon. He's on, no, no, your prices are too high. He's all, oh, dude, we got the best prices. Oh, they're the best. They're better than what you're paying now. And he goes, no, 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 no. He's all, your internet speeds aren't fast enough. And he's all, sir, we got the best internet. Oh, it's the best. He's all, it's better than what you're paying now. It's the best. And the guy steps back and goes, okay, I'll take it. I'm, I'm scratching my head. I'm like, what just happened? Wow. And, and so I'm okay, this is a fluke. It's an anomaly. And so we go knock some more doors, 10, 15 doors down the road. A woman answers the door and he goes, hi man, it's Derek from Toronto. How you doing it? And she's like, fine. She's all, but you know, I've looked into this and you guys don't have you know, the channels I want. And he goes, oh, but man, they're the best channels. Oh, they're the better, better than the channels what you have right now. They're the best. <laughs> and she goes, look, you know what? It's not a great time for me right now. And he goes, oh, man, it's the best time. There's no better time than right now. It's the best. Oh, man. <laughs> and she steps back. And this went on back and forth for, you know, maybe a minute. And she goes, all right, I'll take it. <laughs> and, I, and this went on all day. And every injection. He just said, oh no, it's the best, it's better, it's the best, it's better. And so it became what was, we now know is the better best pitch. <laughs> and I learned something 
incredibly valuable that day. I mean, I, I really had to reflect on what I had just witnessed because, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was flabbergasting, as you can imagine. But Derek was so enthusiastic that these people didn't want to ruin his day. <laughs> and, and it made me realize, especially as I get older, I, you know, I get more cerebral, I get more technical, yeah. I start thinking about the right answers and all the, the jargon and all the stuff that goes into it, and we forget sometimes to just yeah. infuse a little enthusiasm. Because sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes enthusiasm can stand all by itself. And so I'll leave you with this. Hi, it's Michael from Del Mar Toastmasters. And it's the best Toastmasters. <laughs>